starring John and Danny. Boom. Who needs fancy transitions, curtains going up, all that other kind of stuff? Uh, let's just get started. Welcome everyone to Grim After Dark. My name is John and this is the Frontline Gaming Network's weekly interview show where we hit the high points of the last week in the Warhammer community, talk to the best players and content creators from around the world about the one thing we all love, Warhammer. Uh, tonight we welcome back uh, Peter the Falcon Colissimo, back from a much deserved staycation to give us some hard truths as we head towards one of the most important seasons of the year and as we hurtle to headlong towards the Las Vegas Open. Uh, my co-host today needs some introduction. He is the terror of the mid-tables, and is the latest in a long line of podcasters to fall into a pyramid scheme, uh, Danny McDevitt. Danny, this weekend uh, shows the exclusive Invitational 40k event with players from all of the GW Open events attending, uh, with the promise of seeing new missions from the next chapter approved. Uh, what are you hoping to see coming out of this? you got to hope for those close games. We're looking for some average win. Uh, results here, like you know, maybe fifty percent on some of these factions. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, you know, you just I'm hope excited. you have missions that give a percentage chance of winning or losing, and I think that's exactly the kind of thing I was looking for when I was asking you about these new missions. Possibly <laughs> a secondary that allows you to score up to fifteen points. What? Who knows? I know. Who knows? It's it's crazy. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. <laughs> we'll see. I'm um, just checking real quick. Are are the picture transitions working uh, this week here? Or are we gonna we gonna consolidate? Perfect. All right, we're gonna see what works here. Uh, if not, it really doesn't affect the quality of the show. So what what, what are we doing? Uh, <laughs> something something we didn't address last week, uh, and we'd be remiss not to mention is that two weeks ago we welcomed Adrian from Tabletop Titans onto the show, and the very next day they launched a Kickstarter uh, that was considered by some to be very controversial and i for one would like to apologize that danny and i didn't share that we were working on this uh this is uh seems to be a similar set of terrain uh to the one from the kickstarter uh they were in fact working on but to stop any confusion uh our set will be referred to as a church area uh danny this is really embarrassing <laughs> yeah i think the church area will go really well with the uh the holy district tiles that we have set up as well so for, I, I for think sure. that yeah yeah there'll be no confusion on where this imp where this stuff comes from for sure literally zero. Um, zero. I just really really hoping you know that that this terrain can really upzone our game uh, <laughs> from from the rest of it there uh, from the world of Facebook groups uh, this set of logical thoughts about the thousand suns. Uh, that was sort of my favorite thing here. They said, just realized the Thousand Suns are the 15th Legion. Oh, by the way, be good at math for a second. Uh, just realized the Thousand Suns are you the 15th Legion. Uh, you're literally going to law school. Uh, if you minus That's 15 nothing to do with math. <laughs> you can at least lie to me and pretend no. that you are. Um, if you minus 15 by 9, the number of zines, you get 6. Uh, the Space Wolves are the 6th Legion. So mm -hmm. 6 and 9 came together to create 15. Uh, oh. And as much as I love this imagery of Space Wolves and Zinch coming together to create dust, mm -hmm. I don't really super think this is entirely accurate. Or, or kind of what's your thoughts on this, Danny? You're more of a lore uh, than I, I mean, am. obviously, numerology is one of the more accurate ways to determine, uh, like, anything. So, All successful like, prosecutors know numerology. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> One plus two equals guilty. I'm pretty sure that that's the way that you can make your closing arguments and, and uh, kind of defend uh, the elements. Of I swear to God. Case. When you when you graduate law school, which I know you will, please use that as a closing statement. Uh, be like, Perfect. Your Honor, my client might have been caught with a knife at the scene, covered in blood. But one and one, one plus one equals not guilty. Uh, it's a perfect defense. It is. It is. It's uh, like I don't the Chewbacca think... defense, to be honest. It is that famous yeah. defense. Yeah. If the math don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's entirely uh, accurate, though, um, as if white scars came in Nurgle, uh, they would have syphilis. Uh, anyway, more hot takes. Uh, how are words pronounced, Danny? Uh, I think my favorite thing, you guys can see this here, um, but everyone, I can see everyone on the show on the screen right now, on my screen right now. And I got one reaction of Val shaking his head yes, like that was a good thing. And one reaction of Falcon shaking his head no. Like that was a very bad thing. <laughs> or he and didn't know kind of, how they were pronounced. Like that's that, that's possible too. It's like Waldorf and Statler. It's great. I love it. Uh, so more hot takes. Uh, how are words pronounced? 
unpopular opinion. This guy says Laz Cannon should oh. be pronounced Lays Cannon. Um, I know as you can tell, Seth Oster again with these awful opinions. Uh, Danny, what are your opinions on how Laz Cannon should be pronounced? Should it be pronounced correctly, like Laz Cannon, or moronically like this? Sorry, sorry, Tyler, but f that guy. Like, seriously, what a bad opinion. Like, come on. Everybody knows it's Laz Cannon. Like, just, just look at the word phonetically. Clearly. Like, we're not talking, like, yeah, we all know it's short for Laser Cannon. Big freaking deal. One plus one equals Laz Cannon. <laughs> L-A-S plus C-A-N-N-O-N equals Laz Cannon. Cannon. Oh, yeah. Laz Cannon, no. sure. No, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just going to, it's fine. Uh, we're just going to move on. We'll talk about Laz Guns later. Uh, uh, anyway, time to share some important information. Uh, the Las Vegas Open is less than two months away, and John Wyatt Miller, uh, LVO judge, and someone you may know as Sugary John, shared this, some important news on the FLG community page. List submissions and conversion approvals are due January 13th. Uh, so start perfecting those lists. Stop hoping that uh, Custodes and G Seller Cult will be here in time. Um, unless, of course, you're me and have decided to run a crowdsource list with five impulsors. Danny, you're also headed to this big event. What are you leaning towards taking and how can people beat you? Uh, so legit, I'm thinking of bringing a monolith. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just be prepared for that one. I'll see you at the top table. I see you also crowdsourced your Necron list when the fight they have a monolith. No, no, that's that's all that's all me, baby. That's all me. Perfect. So uh, and <laughs> finally, before we bring uh, Falcon on here, um, I want to go back to this selfie. Uh, it's because I love it so much. Uh, this was shared to us by uh, our producer Val um, uh, of Reese taking a wonderful selfie of the ceiling of the the GW event here. And I really want to do this because I'm throwing down this Grim After Dark challenge. Um, I want you guys to go out in the wild. I want you to take a selfie with Reese with the mm -hmm. same composition. Uh, so what I want you to do, go up, take that selfie, foreheads only people i want to see ceilings yep. foreheads if i see you smile you don't get it uh and we will send you something um yeah. i don't no, quite here, know why I, I got i got it i got okay. it i, got it, got it. Got it. I yeah. will give Shavings. you fifty dollars in store credit at flg we'll buy a gift, gift certificate uh for the winner so depending on how many people take the so selfie so bucks. the best self, the best selfie uh, with Reese in that position will get a fifty dollar credit to to FLG. Yep, yep for amazing, sure. Danny. That's a way better prize than what I was imagining. So, <laughs> what were you thinking, like a crusty that. stock or something? Like I don't know. What's your uh, well, what's your game crusty. plan there? It's maybe cold, maybe so some freezes over. So maybe, it's... <laughs> maybe some ball deodorant. I don't know. <laughs> pH balance. That's what I heard. If you get it from. <laughs> No, we can't promote that on oh, this. Sorry, shit. sorry. <laughs> we have to save this for Wednesdays. Um, <laughs> we've wasted enough of your good time uh, with my amazing <laughs> jokes that are Wait. huge, hugely appreciated. Uh, Danny, why don't you take us to uh, Le Main Avant? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So. Are, are you sure. are you assuming that we're not going to keep wasting people's time with the rest of this episode? Oh no, we will. But it won't I just want to make sure that notes. that's not the expectation here, uh, because no. I came woefully unprepared not to waste people's time today. Literally, <laughs> the only reason we're here, Danny, is because yeah. Val promised Reese four hours of content a week, and oh. without us, he's only at three, <laughs> maybe three and a half. So we we got to <laughs> fill in that time. There, there. Fair. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so you, uh, our guest, our guest tonight, we have uh, we have the man, the myth, the legend. Um, after taking, well, we have the man, Henry the Cavill. birth, the legend, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we've got uh, Peter from Forty K Stats, uh, and he's here to talk to us about all kinds of uh, all kinds of interesting statistics, kind of leading up into this uh, the most competitive season of the year. Dude, it is so. so Peter, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Danny. I'm so excited to be here. You know, John and I, we talked extensively about what we were going to cover this episode. So, you, you know, I've spent a lot of time kind of prepping for this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, like I, I, I took a bit of a hiatus from 40K Stats. So I ha I've been working pretty hard to catch up on the, you know, umpteen million games of 40K that have been played in the last few weeks. But 
but I did take a couple hours out of my day to kind of write my my thoughts, my ideas down, kind of do some numerology on, on the topic today. I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it. I'm also super excited for this topic. Uh, Peter, why don't you let uh, everyone know what we're going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about um, like the very best holiday movies of all time, <laughs> period. <laughs> That's it. Because like Warhammer 40K, who cares right now? Who cares? Sure it's are. great. And we just we got a good update on it. But let's great. talk about it. the holidays because we're here. Holiday movies are amazing. And mm-hmm. I've kind of set up like my top five holiday movies of all time with a a kind of runner up movie uh, that's eh, it misses the mark a little bit. But I think I think it's something that everybody should see at least once. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. And then Temidoche Express, thank you in chat for saying Thanksgiving to try and rail us back onto the topic of Warhammer. Uh, but part of the deal of getting Peter on here uh, was that he has very strong opinions about this subject that just need to be I shared. Do. And there's no podcast out there where he can share opinions adjacent to 40K, <laughs> which is why he has to come on here to, to do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, uh, at least, and I like, will say oh. it's, it's important, Peter, that we bring up the point that we need to see how the meta adapts right now right like it's really important that we try and figure that out before we kind of make any kind of predictions you're right right like mm-hmm. um you know these early results that we've had for the last couple of weeks they, they mean nothing like the best players haven't switched over to anything new right like they're not doing anything unique they're not all doing the same thing or anything like that it's not set no. down to three armies or anything like that it's mm-hmm. fine but you know what has what like isn't set in stone are what are the best holiday movies of all time right let's talk about it Right, like that meta will never adapt. I don't think. Like, I just, I don't see how you could. It's well, you just, say that, but let me flat. throw this out to you here, uh, Falcon. Okay. Iron Man three, a uh, quite a recent addition from two thousand twelve. Wonderful yeah. Christmas movie. Yeah, I, I, I see your point. But here's the thing, and let's. <laughs> I think what we need to do is define what a holiday movie is. And for me, a holiday movie requires three things. Okay. Okay. It requires. A story about friends or family coming together in some fashion, okay? That's necessary. It requires to be timed in and around a holiday, Mm -hmm. preferably one of the, you know, winter ones. But I'll take an Easter one if I need to. And lastly, it needs a redemption arc. It's why Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, because there's no fucking redemption arc. Whoa, Justin I just McCain, producer blowing who, me up in the air that you are very who, wrong about that. I, Where, all right, hold where's on the minute. redemption? Where's the redemption? Is it Hans Gruber? No, he is not redeemed. John McCain, doesn't, no redeem. Doesn't he get back together with his wife? No, he gets his wife no back. redemption. No, he never lost her. That's not the point. It's a producer Val, Christmas there was movie. ever a time for you to turn your microphone back on and let no, people know what you think here. Out. This is the people time. People that think that, you're John wrong. McClane literally gets his <laughs> wife back that he lost due to his actions at Christmas. Yeah. No, oh, great. Not, now we have someone unsubbing because of your trash opinions. I hope Falcon. so. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> no, it wasn't they, even YouTube. You it was Twitch. Those ones are important. We don't we don't want them in our community if they don't want if they think Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie. My goodness. If they wait, sorry, it isn't a Christmas movie? They think no. it isn't a Christmas movie or they it think is, that no, it no. is a Christmas movie. They must have they thought it, it is. is if they if they unsubbed. Like that's the only explanation. <laughs> right? There's no other reason why anybody would do that. Oh my god. I I don't know. All right. This show is canceled. I don't think we can go any further. Well, okay, okay, what's what okay. <laughs> Let's hear. Let's hear yours, because like, let's hear. Come on. Yeah, go, Danny. Yeah, tell us about so your best Christmas movies here. Oh, like the best Christmas movies. All right. Yeah. Like, or, uh, like holiday movies in general, guys. Don't be like that. And, and chat, it, jump in with yours too. Uh, surprisingly, as much yeah. as I thought this would just kill all of you, you're throwing in some really good suggestions right here. So thank you. Uh, so, one of my favorite holiday movies is uh, Krampus. Krampus. Oh, violent. Have you ever seen I, that one? Yeah. Yeah, and at the end, you don't know what happened. I yeah. Mm. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody really was knows. It, yeah. Was it was it, was it a dream? Happened and everyone got was it presents? a dream? Is it a snow globe now? Nobody knows. <laughs> nobody. Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, obviously, I also like National Lampoon's uh, uh, Chris, Christmas. Uh, that's a that's a classic. Yeah. That, that hits all the marks. Hand up within that hits the all box. the marks. Um, I rewatched that this week in preparation for this episode. Mm-hmm. Hated it. it what? Was, 
It was I, I did not Literally. like it whatsoever. Literally, I mean, <laughs> fair. What are you? Two thirds of our listener base? Come on now, quiet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, did not enjoy uh, what was happening. It just seemed very. I don't know if it's because Chevy Chase has ruined his um, appeal to me by the fact mm-hmm. he's an awful person. Uh, sure, but it yeah. just seemed to be like Chevy Chase being Chevy Chase uh, in situations yeah. that were moderately Christmas. But do you think that's like a like a Seinfeld isn't funny thing where you know you're you're seeing it now many years later and you know, people have copied it so many times that you're just like, meh. I mean, it's Maybe. like the baseline. Yeah, this is the start. Yeah, that was the start. I want to say as well, someone uh, someone put down here: John McClain isn't redeemed. Are you stoned? um that's no, that's the fun no part here. did we just lose an entire stream uh guys please let us know if you can still see us <laughs> friendly little hello oh dude peter you none of eat the stream <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah we're good we're good all right so okay, good. awesome excellent yeah cool um <laughs> not about it. the street fantastic <laughs> that's, that's that's now the new like flgn official term for technical errors uh during right. any kind of stream okay go so john besides iron man what like let's go let's 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 examine some of your movies that you've decided let me tell you uh, okay. i went back i watched some great ones here there mm-hmm. is a movie uh starring bill goldberg professional wrestler mm-hmm. former oh, football player santa slay now. Jesus Christ, why do I even bother building this up if you're just going to kill the lead like right yes. off the bat? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's up Sorry. there with Santa with muscles as one of the best Christmas movies of all time. So Jewish Bill Goldberg is a murderous homicidal Santa uh, who attacks the family of James Kahn. Like this movie has a far better cast than it possibly deserves. Um, and I think, does it end at an ice rink? I think it ends at yeah. an ice rink. Yeah, well, it's skating. Well, it's like a lake, right? Because he... Uh... He he gets him under the ice. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that was quality. Yeah, the one. white, the white, the white carnivorous buffalo is a is a classy touch. Uh, my favorite part of this entire movie is when he's killing all the people in the strip club, and yeah. uh, and oh, he oh, touch oh. he kills them with this with the yeah with the stripper pole. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, like it's dirty on his hands, like so like he touches it and then like he's like oh like is I don't know I thought that was. Uh, <laughs> That was a nice well, touch, I thought. Yeah. Remember, he does have he does have a professional wrestling level acting experience, so he's not going to be trash right off the bat. Just it's really? it's why like Santa with muscles is one of my tops. Uh, similar right. vein. I've never heard of that movie. Yeah, tell me about it. Ninety six. Hulk Hogan plays oh. a evil millionaire who falls down a garbage chute, ends up wow. with brain damage, and thinks he's Santa Claus. Um, and has oh, an evil elf amazing. minion who mm-hmm. tries to keep him evil, but uh, he decides he needs to protect Christmas from another evil millionaire who like funds like super villains that are just kind of odd. Um, yeah, that's really the extent of it. It's just Hulk Hogan uh, running around beating up guys with electric hands and that fired a lot, I guess. Sorry. Some of the guys. Uh, I'm actually playing the role of problem. Val in this stream right now as I quickly Google the things uh, uh, Peter's saying here. Um, so Santa this with movie... muscles. Looks amazing. Mila Kunis, one of her first roles ever. Mm. I hear you. Wow. Oh, dude, we have the servo Val up. I'm not yeah. sure if this is working, but I just it is. thought yeah, I, it looks good. It's working. I thought I'd come in and just point out that Pete's a fing idiot. No, I'm not. John McClain no. starts to die hard <laughs> as a divorcee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> on the hard rocks, he's he's had to transfer his 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 precinct or whatever cops have to to, to a whole other place, and then he's an going up movie. to yeah. He literally climbs, he <laughs> climbs into the sky, a great tower of his own failures and shortcomings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He 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 walks through a field of glass. Yeah, I don't see it. <laughs> and you tell me that at the end when he shouts out for Holly. He is not redeemed. No, <laughs> I don't see it. There's no redemption arc there. Can I just point out that we've been working? Uh, or he just does working. a heroic wait, wait, thing, wait, wait, and then wait, his wait, wife's wait, like, wait, "Hold on, You're hold, cool. on hold on, hold on, hold on." When when you were in an argument in 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 grade school, were you one of those guys who just said, I, "I know you are, but what am I?" 
I don't is, need is to that say that. Is that what you did? Well, you're, <laughs> no, you're, you're just trying to get a redemption arc, Val. You're just like, he's a guy and his wife hates him. And so he climbs a tower and he kills a German terrorist. And then she loves him again. What's That's a weird arc. Like, I don't. This isn't Shakespeare. This isn't Santa with muscles we're talking about here, where like there is a <laughs> legitimate redemption arc for a man who ends up with brain damage, oh. but believes he's Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> What's important so- to realize here is Santa with muscles is just a modern day retelling of Othello. So, so Peter, yeah. you, you do have that right. Exactly. Oh. I just, oh, I'm beside myself. So uh, I do I do want to point out, by the way, guys, uh, uh, the, the uh, Richard, uh, FLGM producer extraordinaire, has been working uh, off and on for, for weeks to make this servo valve work. Uh, yeah. So that yeah, we can right. have him, really good. which we can have him jump in and come in and make little cool snipe whips or cool 40K things. I requested things. dolphin teeth, and uh, he really knocked that out of the park. He did. He uh, really did. But so like regards, so he can come in and be like, oh, I have all of these opinions about 40K, but no, he chooses to deploy it. No, I don't uh, have any Due those. to Peter's trash <laughs> opinion. It is not a trash opinion. It is not. It is. You cannot it's tell me. And it's what you I'd cannot tell me you, that someone would I'm just be like, oh, I divorced you for all the wrong reasons. You killed a German terrorist. Never mind. Well, you sense. know what, See Peter? This jiggling I don't I'm know doing how side they... to side? I, I, this is as close I, as I can get to, uh, to shaking my head. And also, no, he did not kill a German terrorist. Carl killed the German terrorist because he survived oh, the fall. And when he stood up, he was redeemed because he was able to fire his gun again after murdering people. Anyway, so, I should Reginald Bell Johnson is the hero of that movie. Uh, okay, I'll give you that. Because I'd just he... like to point out, Peter, that I don't know how they do things in Canada. But in the United States, if you kill a German terrorist... <laughs> It's instant. Wait. It's. I think you need to, Danny. I'm just gonna slow you down. Slow down the roll. Slow the roll. Back it up. Back it up. Pause. I think we should talk about a different. Danny, movie. I should remind you. Right, cool. yeah. More hammers yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Servo yeah. Val. Uh, Servo Val. Tell us about your choices for Christmas movie while I maintain this amazing eyeline work. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's the series of, of acid trips starring Kurt Russell as like uh, like a Santa Claus action hero. Pete, you probably know what it is. You like is bad it things. Christmas Chronicle? That, Something like that? Script, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, and, a, and a really show, showing some tread on the tires, Goldie, Goldie Hawn, I think, in that. Yeah. Well, but, you know. Uh, that's how they met, I will actually. say, it's been a while. Ro- Rotten Tomatoes uh, ranked Christmas Chronicles as their 60th best Christmas movie. Oh, I believe it. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. It beat out Christmas Chronicles 2 by one spot. What? Mm. Uh, can we talk about Jingle All the Way? Is that is that on the Jingle list All of, the uh, Way. Now, that's a redemption story. Yeah, Not really. Jingle All that's... the Way 2. That, Larry the Cable Guy, get out of here. <laughs> but Jingle All the Way 1, Schwarzenegger. When he was in his prime. And Sinbad. Just nailing it. Don't forget I about Sinbad. I did watch Sinbad. that this week, too. Sinbad. I mean, okay, here's the thing I don't like about Jingle All the Way. All right, you guys. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, honestly, all of the other ten clashes tonight, uh, th- that exiting Val Servo Skull, all worthwhile. <laughs> just to see him slowly <laughs> back out. Um, uh, feel free to come it back. Wasn't to it wasn't worth it. This opinion. is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that moves makes me believe that Val actually is manually moving his mouse to make it flow naturally. He uh, but anyway, 100%. that's that's amazing that 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 character work. Um, Jingle all the way. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a really bad father. He and is. I yeah. find it really hard to root for someone who's just. <laughs> I'm a trash parent who forgot to buy a gift. I said I would. Um, mm-hmm. Oh no. That's the premise. And he doesn't seem to learn or appreciate or grow. He just gets to wear a muscly Turbo Man costume. He does, which is his redemption. Right. He does that all We're... for his kid. Yeah. You're not telling... Okay. You got... Uh, Peter, you're a father. Like, if you had the chance and the if you had the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger and someone was like, hey, you get to wear this Turbo Man costume if, if you want to, would you do it for you or for your child? <laughs> you mean when? <laughs> yeah, like, I would just do it. <laughs> I'm Turbo Man every Christmas. <laughs> like, don't even. It's not even a question. I've worn way worse for less money. 
Well, we yeah, know you're going to be an LPO, LPO, so I think uh, I've having... I've legitimately uh, had to pay people to wear stuff like that, so I get I, it. I'm into it. I really wish you wouldn't have shown me those pictures, to be honest, at the last <laughs> LPO. It was really disconcerting. I still have nightmares. <laughs> It's just that was a lot of for this phone, and he's been like, "Look at this! This is me in gear. This is this is my jingle all the way cosplay." Merry Christmas, Danny! Merry Christmas, Danny! You're welcome. But anyway, yeah, Peter, what are your thoughts on Jingle All the Way? Because that seemed to be like a sarcastic best choice for a good Christmas movie. Yeah, it's it's not in my top five by far. Like Santa with Muscles isn't in my top five, and that's a that's a good movie. Is that an um, honorable mention? Santa with Muscles is that? Oh is yeah, that what that one hundred percent is a it's okay. a, a honorable mention. Like my top five Christmas movies, the, yeah, it's uh, Rise of the Guardians because I have kids and it's just a fantastic oh. Christmas movie slash like that's all really holiday movie. Yeah. Really nails yeah. it on all levels. If you haven't watched watched it, give it a good give it a good go. You'll enjoy it. I guarantee you. Um, you know the Grinch. Classic, sure. Doctor, how have we talked go, about Home Alone? Can't Classic Grinch. That. We're Classic. not there yet. Or, or Jim Carrey Grinch. Uh, yeah, you know, classic oh. is classic. Uh, Jim Carrey is okay. Um, he's a little bit much, but I can get <laughs> I through say, it. I was gonna say, from what I'm hearing in my ear, it seems like the servo valve will be back soon, and then I look at my screen, and there he is and because he's, right he is very there. excited, very excited about things. Um, Miracle on 34th Street, like yeah. super classic, amazing. Um, and then we've got Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds, early career. Oh, fresh off okay. Wilder. oh yeah. Isn't that Amy, with Smart, oh, the, Amy Smart? The, that's a, yeah. the girl next door uh, of a person of my age. Um, just amazing. Anna Ferris in one of her funniest roles. I know she's Danny's favorite actress. He's told me multiple times now, how much he loves Anna fair, Ferris. I've Anna never Ferris once is really that. good in um the protect and serve movie uh, i think is my favorite Anna Ferris movie. she is incredible in this i like i recently rewatched this i saw this movie in theater back like when i was like i don't know 21 years old whenever it came out uh because mm-hmm. i had a free ticket and i had to use it before it ran out um this movie and, is 20 and, and years was, old folks you do the math and Guys. i had a huge crush on anna ferris and amy smart so i was okay with it uh ryan reynolds is very funny uh, Amy Smart is great, but Anna Faris, it, it, the toothpaste scene, I just about died. I just about died. Uh, so, yeah, it's got redemption arc. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, the sleazy Hollywood music producer who used to be this like fat kind of fr- dude who thought he was friend zone, but he never was because friend zone doesn't exist, guys. And he just like you get to see him kind of relive his life as he ends up stuck at home when he doesn't want to be. And just a great movie. Um, and then finally, the number one Christmas movie of all time is Avatar. Yeah. Like the last Airbender, either one you pick. <laughs> I think I feel that this is. Disingen- I feel this is James Avatar. Thing. No, James Cameron's Avatar needs something, and because it for a long time was the most watched movie of all time, made a majillion dollars, yeah. um, had hair sex in it. Um, Why not? Had, a lot of had a, an element called unobtainium, and like, but it doesn't have a place anymore. And I think it. This is it. It's now the best Christmas movie of all time. I want to point out. It's got a redemption the, arc. The it chat is responding. The chat is responding um, with such positive terms to agree with you, Peter, by saying "what," and then confused face emoji. Well, they should be because it's the best Christmas movie of all time or holiday movie in general. Wait, what is okay? What is even the redemption arc? My brain is broken at this point here. Like, I, I must mean, feel like you feel after people message you to figure out their ELO scores when they've done three RTTs. But what <laughs> on earth? <laughs> See, I made it about forty k eventually. But it was me. It was me. I did that. <laughs> he did. What on he did do earth? That. Twice. What on earth makes? Said I was what's wrong. the redemption story of Avatar? What do you mean? Did you not watch the movie? He turns yeah. into a giant blue man because he wants to kill them all. And then he's like, well, maybe they're cool. And then, you know, hair stuff happens and he saves the world. And he no, rides he, giant bird dragons afterwards. He goes with the um, military to, in, in, like, invade yeah. and kind of implant himself. And then, himself he, and then he's like, don't want to anymore. Then he gets boned by some girl through the hair. And he's like, wow, this is actually pretty sweet. We probably should keep doing this. And, oh, and I he saves destroy the, you all. Like it's he, he it's was like what's that cartoon uh, Fern Gully? It's Fern Gully, but like better animated. Fern Gully isn't a Christmas movie. That dude's thinking it with is. his ponytail. Yeah, it is. Gosh, what? what yeah. So animals. Avatar, it just needs a spot. Avatar um, needs a spot. 
Danny. Wow. That that opinion. We're gonna add, and, and for podcast listeners, I'm using quotation fingers. Opinion uh, about Christmas movie, uh, Danny. What is your number one Christmas movie? Oh, uh, probably Elf. Elf's good. Elf yeah, is good. Elf is a good movie. You can't go wrong. I mean, it is a little Will Ferrell. Um, yeah, but it was like, early Will Ferrell when there wasn't a lot of this is a Will Ferrell thing, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I know for me, like, semi-pro was when I started going, eh, a little bit about him. But even then, that's still pretty good. A little too much. Elf is too much, but because of the way it's created and they use, like, the zany sound effects when slips and things happen, it almost mm. makes him work in that world. So I, I totally agree. Yeah, Elf would be great. Danny, you look incredulous right now. How am I saying that? Well, no, I mean, he's basically a character personified, kind of like Jim Carrey. Like, he's, he's got a lot of good physical humor. And so mm-hmm. I think that kind of playing off of that really, it works well in like kind of this unrealistic kind of uh, this unrealistic kind of movie. So, yeah, I really like so, Elf. So why doesn't it work? And this is to both of you guys and any appearing skulls. Why doesn't that work in the Grinch, uh, the Jim Carrey Grinch, where we take that same kind of energy? I, to the... I, I like the Grinch. With I didn't Jim think Carrey. it was bad. I think Jim Carrey is great. I think it's just one of those things where you're taking a classic movie and redoing it. And then, and then that puts something on it, right? where you, you either you put your own twist on it and maybe you didn't need to um that's really it i don't think the movie's bad by any means it's just the original is kind of the original yeah for sure and then, then val i heard you hovering overhead earlier mentioning a movie that we haven't talked about yet um and now i'm just gonna make you press a bunch of buttons to come in and share your opinions about it what? and then no way fill up time hello yes <laughs> is it a christmas story you you mentioned a Christmas movie, and you're like, how come you guys haven't talked about this yet? Um, full disclosure, uh, the, the program he's that ta- animates my face, uh, oh. I closed it. So now it's, okay. just, now it's just me. Oh, no, yes. I'm talking. It's ventriloquism. Okay, look. Um, it. Home Alone. Where's Home Alone in all of this? You read... Yeah, oh, you, you mean Wait, when which, a small abandoned child tries to murder two burglars as a home? Yeah. Where's, where's, the, re- the, where's the redemption? Is it the parents <laughs> remembering they forgot their kids? Is it the old man with the shovel across yeah, the street who yeah, isn't a murderer? Yeah, Maybe. I, I, I forget. When Moses came down, did, did he did he write on his is tablets it Trump that Peter Home Alone gets too? to define what a Christmas movie is? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he's choosing yeah. Avatar, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I mean look, a Christmas it's not, movie. It's not planes, trains, and automobiles, right? But like, no. it's uh, oh man, it's good film. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. It's it's but it's hey, John Candy's in both. John Candy's in both. Um, Home it's Alone's great. Denominator. But then when you look at like something like Home Alone, and the thing that I was actually looking through like a Lego catalog today, and one of the sets they make now is the Home Alone house. Mm-hmm. That's um, a nightmare. And that house, uh, <laughs> combined with flying That's your trap. entire family to Paris. Um, what is, uh, what does his dad do for, for work and how yeah, is it legal? No because that is some budgeting that I can't wrap my head around. Yep. Bitcoin. I'm I mean, guessing. it was the early nineties. That house was probably worth like 150 grand. If that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> if that. Flight to Paris was three shillings. I don't, you know, <laughs> that much three wheat it. pennies, actually. <laughs> that is a great movie in the best way. Oh, now he's dead. Yeah, that's perfect. There we go. But yeah, it is It is a really good movie. I think it's one of the ones that we all get to watch um, as yeah. kind of, and especially me as a parent myself, uh, where I'm like, I just don't want to watch another cartoon. Uh, so that yeah. is a sort of safe movie to put on um, that isn't completely unbearable. So large fan uh, of those there. Um, Chad is coming up with some great ones. We have Kiss Kiss Bang Bang uh, by Shane Black, uh, mm-hmm. which is an amazing movie. Um, I love it very much. Would you qualify it as a Christmas movie? Sure. You know what? I picked Avatar, so we have to. I think at this point we have to just let it all in. Except Die yep. Hard. <laughs> That's fair. All of them, but so we talked about just Swamp Thing. So, Swamp Thing? Yeah, well, that's a great I Christmas mean, we can. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, go go ahead. Talk, talk to me about it. I haven't heard of this one here, especially in the context of Christmas. I've, have you? What you've never you've never seen Swamp Thing before? Is that what you're telling me? No, the no, I have, I have not seen Swamp Thing. Oh, okay. Well, 
a mild no. mannered <laughs> a mild mannered plant botanist gets some chemicals poured on him in a swamp and becomes the swamp thing well, I, i've heard I, of swamp thing i'm a large alan oh, moore yeah. fan um, okay sorry yeah I, I'm, I don't I'm just movie. I'm, I'm trying sorry there is a movie there's absolutely a movie yeah there is but continue. 1982 it's hour bad. and 31 Isn't it a trauma minutes film? Long. yeah probably it had wes craven in it they tried to do Bro. a series recently as well but they did it failed yeah it's too <laughs> bad which is too bad because so what thing- makes so what makes that Swamp Thing movie so good? Like, what makes you so interested in it? Oh, well, I mean, obviously the redemption arc, right? Like, yeah. I mean, he becomes <laughs> a monster the and then a hero. Boom. Yeah. Redemption. That's a big and redemption then, arc. At the yeah. end, he becomes the tree because he's just a pile of moss uh, right. that celebrates Christmas. Well, he's not just a pile of moss. I think moss. it's Hanukkah for him. He's also a man. That's fair. That's fair. But also a thing. Uh, and as Chad's pointing out, one of the most True. powerful characters in the DC universe. So screw you, Superman. You're not a really pile is. of weeds. The green yeah. is very powerful, man. I mean, it made Animal Man good for a while. That's hard. 35 do. minutes in, guys. Only 25 more. <laughs> We're nailing it. We're nailing it. You know, there's it. like, it. It's a Wonderful Life. We haven't talked about as like sure. the quintessential Christmas movie. You know, bells ringing, angels get their wings. A1. Uh, I mean, the a Santa classic. Claus and the Santa Claus Ooh. 2. Not the Santa Claus 3, per se, although Martin Short no, does his best. You seem to not like sequels very much, even though... Like, I said Santa Claus 2 was fine. Yeah, it was. I agree with that. It's the it Godfather 2 of Christmas-based sequels. You can't really complain like, about it. Santa Claus is really good. Santa Claus mm-hmm. 2 is, is good. Santa Claus yeah. 3... Maybe one too Bad. many Santa Clauses. Maybe it's relying a little too much on Martin Short's ability to be very manic and sing... Uh, to get you through it. <laughs> that is, that's totally fair. So what makes, uh, Peter, and now you've listed things like Avatar, uh, you've listed uh, Santa with Muscles, you haven't listed Die Hard due to your terrible opinions, but we're going to ask you this no, anyway here. Legitimate. Um, uh, aside from that redemption arc, like what makes the perfect Christmas movie to you? Like what what ha- has to be in there to be like, okay, that, that's pretty good. So like no. so far you've talked about redemption arcs, hair sex. Um, yeah. Uh, Blue skin. You know, the one thing that Avatar doesn't have, and it may knock it down a few notches, the more I think about it, is family. Christmas. Oh, family, family. Yeah, who, yeah. that's yeah. an important family. Family yeah. or friends, but like family in particular, like love in general, is a big deal. And you know, a lot of those movies really nail it. Santa Claus with uh, you know Tim uh, Tim uh, Allen and his his son, and trying to work that angle of you know make him mm-hmm. realize that Santa's real, Christmas is real. After everything that he's done as a super bad uh, money grubbing dad, um, it's a wonderful life. This whole concept of what if I didn't even exist, you know, but he still has this family he needs to take care of, blah, blah, blah. Like it's like family is such a hardcore aspect. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street, the whole idea that there's just this one little girl that needs to make everyone believe that Santa exists and her mom is trying Mm -hmm. desperately to like to figure that out herself. Like it's just it's it's like a key ingredient it's another reason why Home Alone is pretty shitty because, like, you <laughs> can out the window until the last like ten seconds. Imagine uh, <laughs> traveling across a continent, uh, flying for around ten hours, be like, oh, and then just being like, whiny doopsie. Our whiny son, who we keep talking about that never shuts up, hasn't talked in eleven hours. Yeah. Um, but hey, that Catherine mean- O'Hare, <laughs> Catherine O'Hare's in that movie, and then she was on Shit's Creek, and that's a, the, one of the best show, television shows that's ever been on TV. So it, she, uh, the whole Home Alone gets a pass because of her. Are um, we forgetting was... the old man? We're forgetting the old man. There's your yes. redemption arc, Jackass. Santa. We, we Santa. already talked about the old man. This guy nah, talking listening. to me about the old man. I was thinking that maybe a serial killer, maybe not. Shovel. Who knows? Tarantula. He's old. Yeah. Um, but by your very definition, does that make uh, the Fast and Furious movies uh, starring oh, yeah. Vin Diesel <laughs> amongst it's others? All, it's all about was, family in those movies. Because yeah, John, it's all about family. When I said I spent hours thinking about this, it was mostly hours thinking about how the Fast and the Furious movies may indeed be Christmas movies or holiday <laughs> movies in general. Like particularly, I think it's um, Fast and Furious. Like the sixth movie was it fa- the Fast and Furious when they go to Antarctica and uh, have mm-hmm. to uh, like uh, escape the submarine because that's yeah. kind of Christmassy. There's snow at what least. you didn't see is the animators actually made a CGI Christmas tree that went inside that submarine. So there so you, you go. knew it was nailed Christmas. it. It nailed was actually it. filled with presents and Christmas trees. But I think what you could do is do That's like Santa's some kind of Venn diagram for movies. 
and have like holiday movie in the middle and there's like family redemption holiday and then in the middle is what an actual holiday movie oh, is we could do sure. something like that and in that fast and the furious movie dom was redeemed because he had to be a bad guy to save his he kidnapped did. son mm. yes so but he no had knew that he redemption had. yeah mm. because no yeah interesting fast and the furious number what one about Christmas what about night at the museum now that seems like a holiday movie it takes place in the holidays. There is redemption yeah. between yeah. Ben Stiller and, and there's his son. family. Yeah. yeah, I think it. I think it yeah. meets the Venn diagram there. I think it meets. Is it it somewhere points. the top? Yeah. Yeah. So now we have a couple circles in our Venn diagram of what makes a Christmas movie. We have our uh, redemption. We have yep. family. Yep. I want to add a third circle into here, which says the third terrible was holidays. father. The third oh, is sorry. holidays. A fourth circle: terrible okay. father. Uh, because oh, Home Alone, okay. yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Home Alone, Die yeah. Hard, Terrible yeah. Fathers, uh, Jingle All the Way, movie, Terrible that's Father, uh, yeah, <laughs> The Santa Claus, Terrible Father, yeah. Um, that's true. What What do you guys liar, think? Liar, liar, that... Terrible Father, Terrible yeah. Father. That's that's true. That is Christmas movie too. Yeah. Uh, oh. Why do you think the Terrible no, Father? Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Stop. <laughs> and he's just like we have to stop. <laughs> No more. <laughs> Danny's just here. like, look, <laughs> said I let the Avatar thing slide. I let the Die Hard thing slide. It was really no, no wait, that, the Die Hard thing was absolutely true. But I did let the Avatar slide because I was just like, I'll let Peter get up on his soapbox and talk. And, you. uh, you. and yeah, you're welcome. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but like, it's no, it's this you. is a bridge too far. Liar, liar is not a Christmas movie or a holiday movie. It's no. just not man on the moon though. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> but the cable guy, like Jim Carrey is like a master of Christmas movies. Maybe. Maybe. Cause liar, Maybe. liar. Okay. Look at the circles. It fills. Cause we have our four circles of terrible father, um, holiday. Mm -hmm. Uh, what were the other ones we had here? Man, Redemption. 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 Okay. So Liar Liar checks three of those boxes. Therefore, it yeah. is 75% a Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, we could, we, I, maybe I, we could do a Christmas movie scale. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, like, on a scale from Santa with muscles to Die Hard, where does Liar Liar sit for you, Danny? Oh, f zero. Like, not like a bad, <laughs> like maybe a one. <laughs> <laughs> what? So I was to understand there was some statistics involved in deciding these Christmas movies. Is that true, Peter? Or it, it's yeah, just I went an to arbitrary a ranking? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Fair. Yeah. So I do have here, just to kind of like go on websites. here. Like uh, we have Raw Rotten Tomatoes best Christmas movie list. So I'm going to go through the mm -hmm. top 10 for you guys here. Let's hear it. Uh, maybe you can tell me what a couple are. Uh, number 10 is Tangerine. I have no uh, idea what that is. So let me read the description here, uh, okay. which is not up top. So we'll just go through the little bit here. After hearing that her boyfriend slash pimp cheated on her while she was in jail, a hooker and her best friend set, uh, and then more. And then it went away somewhere. That's the number 10 okay. best uh, Christmas movie. Probably based on not. No, I would say um, that sounds like a terrible movie. Number nine is uh, Carol uh, from 2015 mm -hmm, uh, with mm -hmm. Kate Blanchett and Rona Mara. Okay. Uh, it's uh, they perused doll displays in the 1950s Manhattan department store. This is a terrible list for on tomatoes. Holy cow! Uh, then Are we have sure uh, this is the right list. It says okay. best Christmas movies right in the address. Uh, number eight, meet me in St. Louis. Number seven, Little Women. I'm sorry, uh, what did you just say? Did you just say St. Louis? Yeah. Oh, Louis. Oh, Louis, whatever. Some of us are not from this continent, sir, and you need to respect that. No, um, I won't. As as, <laughs> as an American, I refuse to do that. <laughs> That's fair. That That is your culture. Um, uh, number seven, Little Women. Uh, number six, okay. Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Now, guys, this is more a Halloween uh, movie than a Christmas movie. I don't wait, know hold on. Movie. All right, hold on a minute, though. Did we mm -hmm. not say that these were holiday movies and not specifically Christmas movies? Yeah, uh, no, I don't want said... to be specific to Christmas because you okay, know, there's I'm other sorry. holidays. That's fair. All right, so tell me how tell me how Avatar fits into this cycle, Peter. Any of them. Name it. How is it a Christmas movie? There's no Christmas in Avatar. Is it there? How long does it take? We don't even know. There's no timeline set up, Danny. Oh my god. Do you even uh, know what the 
Never mind. I'm yeah, okay. The number cool. four best Christmas movie, uh, The so Shop bad. Around the Corner from 1940s. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Joel, with War Games Live, letting us know any movie made before 1950 should be disqualified. I agree. Uh, number, number three, Holiday Inn from 1942. Yeah. Uh, then Miracle on 40, uh, 34th, 34th Street, Street. And then It's a Wonderful Life. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think they That's cheated. the two. I will say Die Hard, number 11. They were wrong. Arthur Christmas, number 12. Do you guys remember Arthur Christmas? Arthur Christmas. That's a fine movie. Mm-hmm. That is a I fine movie. I don't think I've movie. seen that before. Um, it was a solid okay. Uh, my main memory, I never watched it, but I worked at a store that had the toy range when it came out, but no one bought the toys because no one saw the movie. And they mm-hmm. sat on a shelf for the two and a half years I worked for that company. Oh, never like Arthur the, the Anteater, the cartoon character? No, no, it's a real person. This is a real serious Christmas conversation. Why are we talking about Anteaters? I mean, we just talked about Elf. I thought yeah, you were going to say <laughs> I you thought about it. And, you had the go-to like, and you went with Elf. It's, no, no, I'm no. I wanted, I didn't want to just keep harping on this point. It's obvious I've already, I've already won this argument. So uh, <laughs> That's fair. There was, no, there was nothing to win. There was nothing to win. <laughs> so, uh, re-going through the guidelines that, that you guys sent in there where we don't want to stick to just Christmas. Um, and when I search for best holiday movies, uh, what comes up first here is 2020's Fat Man, uh, starring Mel Gibson. Is that like uh, Bad Santa? Oh, that's no, that's, isn't Christmas that the movie. one where he's like a, a Santa assassin or something? A rowdy, unorthodox oh. Santa Claus is fighting to save his declining business. Uh, meanwhile, Billy, a neglected and precocious 12-year-old, hires a hitman to kill Santa after receiving yeah. a lump of coal in his stocking. Yeah, uh, this movie good. sounds amazing. Uh, also with the Mel Gibson link, uh, which is uh, super good. Always, always. Well, you know that he's always. a big, <laughs> a big fan Danny? of Christmas. Yeah, Danny knows. He's a- He's a big fan of Christmas. Danny You're no. right. Yes. <laughs> I just That's thought I'd let know. everyone know that um, no one's watching on competitive 40K. <laughs> what? Are you what? serious? That is terrible. Um, you guys, this is big, serious. Couple. Okay. Um, Warhammer Christmas stories. Who, who hmm. would get the biggest lump of coal in their stocking uh, in the Warhammer universe? Peter, go. Um, Asmodai because he's the worst. I mean, okay. As a Dark Angels fan, I, I like that's fair. He's just Danny. You know, I know he's terrible. I can't even, I can't even like argue against it. He's just, he's the absolute worst. He's just terrible. Yeah. Okay. Did that that work? Did we appeal to the Com Forty K crowd? No. No. Okay. So back to Christmas. We're still trending poorly. (laughs) In general, we're trending poorly. This whole thing is. Not good. <laughs> if ever there was a tagline for this show, <laughs> we're trending poorly. <laughs> trending poorly, the show. <laughs> See, can that be, can that be our tagline, like our subtitle? Like, Grand After so. Dark, trending poorly. Trending poorly. I like that. Let's make That's a t-shirt right there. That's a t-shirt right there. I think my favorite thing is something I did when we started talking, uh, and Peter, you were introducing the segment here. Um, is I had my phone out and leaned in and I was just filming Val's face as he listened to what you were saying. And just that slight eye roll is the kind of thing that gets me in trouble with my wife, Val, and I don't appreciate your, <laughs> your putting <laughs> on this year. Oh. <sighs> Terrible, but wonderful. So what else you guys got? I got nothing. I ran through everything I needed to talk about from a holiday perspective. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, I, there is a question on whether uh, Talladega Nights is a Christmas uh, Christmas movie or not, or it's a, a holiday movie, movie. It is a good movie. That is really good. What What makes it Christmas? Because he learned something and he's a terrible father. Is this like honestly like the, the what we've come down to? Because by that very factor, by that very sort of like uh, criteria you put down, Avatar isn't uh, a Christmas movie. Are you serious? Because Sam Worthington isn't a bad father. Well, I mean, He's you were the not one that a added father bad because his penis. I, I just, work. I just added family in general. Like I was just okay with family, but then you went add bad. Where's father. his family? Where, where's his family in that? 
of their old dead. The weird hippie he's... blue people that he meets. Yeah, they, no they become his there. new family. I get it. There we go. Bam. Done. Got him. <laughs> Which Gosper. family? Is human family or is Navi, Navi family? family? The family that he doesn't have a human family. At least Navi that. That's all I have. Like, it's perfect. It just yes. fits. <laughs> That, that, that's why it's Nailed a Christmas it. movie, because it's sort of the, the Spanish thing there. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving away from this, guys, uh, Castores on their way out. Uh, they know martial arts now. Oh, thank now you. That we... you. saved it, John. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> the, now, the, now that we've got really rid of... Really this one around. Now that we've got rid of all of the, all of the fake pretenders... Oh, Custodes man. know martial arts. <laughs> yeah, it's really that's exciting. I um I'm really down on this new Custodes Codex that's coming out. I'm really oh. worried, uh, but oh, man. they know kung fu now or karate that's or something. True. They do katas, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's I pretty, pretty cool. excited now. They do know Jim Kata now, and like I said, I just wanted to weed out all of the fake people who, who didn't really listen and wouldn't sit through 43 minutes of us talking about Christmas <laughs> movies to hear your opinions on new Custodes. <laughs> I just wish I could actually talk about Christmas movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the Hammer and Bolter Christmas story. Actually, like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. That'd about be nice. That. Yeah, I think I it's uh, really it'd be novel. cool if they did like a Red Gobbo thing because you saw they did like the stop motion animation, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of moving along the the rooftops there. And you think I can make more. it on Hammer, Hammer and Bolter? Yeah, I mean you're you're better quality animation even right now. I mean we're right <laughs> up, we're right on the stuff. cusp. I, I mean I think so. Yeah, we're on the cusp. I think uh, th- your partnership with GW is wasted if you don't have at least one character named after you in a Black Library novel. Mm. If it's like Guardsman Valhissimo or something like that, uh, who, who dies dies instantly to like a Acadian uh, bullet. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, do they have uh, holidays in the grim dark? You guys read all. Yeah, Sanguinala. We do. That's the holiday. Sanguinala. Yeah. That's it's when nice. they celebrate Sanguinus's blood. Yep. Mm. It's like mm. blood Christmas. Blood Christmas. Yeah. Blood Christmas. Yeah. Everyone hoped, like sitting under the tree, hoping they'd been good enough to be covered in the emperor's you, blood. Well, yeah, you get a skull. That's like that's like if you've been really good, you get a skull. Or a candle. Oh, what if you're really bad? So if you're really good, you get a skull. If you're really bad, what'd you get? Not a skull. Uh, dead. You yeah, you probably die. I'm gonna go with you die. <laughs> pretty bad. You it's become a bad a, universe. When you're bad, uh, you die. Uh, when you're good, you get the skull of someone who died for being bad. Yeah, yeah. It's like to, a, rem- to it's remind you that you should not be bad. It right. Or you just get good. fed to uh, your the the corpse emperor. You know that's nice. You or corpse star, right? Happy holidays. Uh, feed this mm-hmm. uh, skeleton. Perfect. It's so 40 It's nailed it. So very cool. Yeah, you know, we have to uh, sacrifice a thousand lives to get one present. That, that's the real way it goes. Yeah. Or I really yeah. want one of these, like, amazing Black Library novels to have, like, this super intense battle sequence. Or, like, if we even look at something like um, uh, uh, the... This, the White Scar book that just came out for the Siege of Terra. Um, like this big Primarch on Primarch battle, and then all of a sudden, like, crippled on the end, he just reaches out and be like, for you, and hands up just like a little rat present. And that's how Mortarian came back to the light of the Emperor. What the Amazing. hell is what I want to say? Read. Amazing. Yeah, I said gold. That's sir. a Christmas movie I, I would watch. <laughs> just, Absolutely. Yeah. Is Jim Carrey in it? <laughs> yeah, he's the one who plays the con. Okay. Ooh. Do we feel that the that, that Christmas has been jeopardized by the uh, plushie recall? Oh, oh, I did have a joke about that. Question. I totally forgot about. Great question, Val. Don't don't worry, John. I got this. You can. Uh... Man, don't, don't you think every week? Why do I have this moron doing things when I could just do it way better? <laughs> um, like weekly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could get Danny though. The, no, you could. He's really easy. It's, it's like very. You just tell him a place, and he shows up. It's great. It's great. Um, but yeah, yeah, so guys, the the plushie, the the squig, <laughs> the really hard to find squig was recalled because the little baubles on the back weren't uh, attached well enough for Europe and Australia. It's fine in America right now, though. Uh, that is that yeah. is a okay and safe. Uh, but yeah, it's being uh, told to recall. <laughs> Yeah, in America, you, you can choke on a squig. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not on a Kinder Surprise though. Don't put something <laughs> no, inside of chocolate. Oh, You'll... wait, 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 wait. We have Kinder Surprise now. 
Oh, you have it again? Because you yeah, guys you banned it for a long time. You don't you? have the right ones, though. Uh, that's the thing. I got a little dragon maybe, that went uh, over my finger last time I got one. Oh, cute. Do you think someone maybe discovered those uh, loose balls while using a male grooming product? <laughs> <laughs> it's a common like problem, loose balls. It's a common uh, problem. I will easily like fix with promo code Falcon. Uh, he has this weird say. obsession with, with like toilet tank water at level height. I mean, where, I do. Where he says he, uh, hold, hold on. Can we talk well, about that for a second? Let's go back. I'm really yeah. interested to see what he has to say about that. You just need to, needs I to was, be lower. I was just reading facial cues and was ready to wrap it up. And now we're talking about toilet tank height. Like, like I'm all in on this. Just saying. So why does it need to be lower, but Peter? He, it's not the to... tank. It's the bowl of water. Oh, bowl of water. I, I think I understand why this is. All right. There cool. With, <laughs> without yeah. you saying it specifically, I get it now. You, you got it. What? Why After is, 30, tell me. it just needs to be frankly lower. frankly i agree <laughs> oh i get it because you guys have droopy balls I, I get it now i understand what are you talking about Tyler i just didn't just want to waste so much water 30 minutes of this episode and we didn't know you content it's only so. it's great yeah oh, good. Barely it's better. only like eight or nine of those in this episode yeah, it's yeah that, that's fine uh, and luckily he just needs to listen out for his name because we apologize like immediately after saying it um but from what i'm depositing from what you guys are saying the the tank or the water in the toilet has to be lower uh yeah. so you guys don't have to towel dry your balls after pooping wait 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 are you using a towel for that because I, I just want to make sure <laughs> i understand what are you gonna do? Go with like random tank water going around? Just, all uh, I just want to point out that this this show proves that Nurgle Matthew will watch anything. He will. <laughs> That's a gentleman. He, he'll hang in there. He'll just grind it out. The whole and, thing. Uh, Amazing. He'll just he'll just white knuckle to the end, which this we're mercifully me getting close to. I'm I, I, <laughs> fair. And uh, like, um, I, I've seen a picture of you, Nurgle Matthew, but like the fact you've sat through this whole thing makes me think you are a Bob, uh, regardless, because uh, who else would? But as Val so, so wonderfully said, we are reaching the end mm -hmm. um, of this wonderful uh, 40K related content as he. Uh, I just, I just want to, well, Oh, I'm not in front of that TV. one. Hold on. Oh, there we go. There we go. oh my God. Face. What is happening? There we go. Okay. Now, yeah, there we go. I just want to just take center stage here for a second. Just <laughs> just wholeheartedly apologize. I just want to <laughs> I just want to say I'm so sorry. <laughs> Up until now, I considered Pete a great friend and the show quality. And this is not representative of what I think. The Frontline Gaming Network is normally able <laughs> to deliver on a regular basis we're delirious it's christmas time and uh i just want to thank all of you uh for hanging in there i'm yep. gonna go away now okay thank you val uh, thank you val very true and thank you to apologize i mean to be honest 20 episodes too late but thank you for finally apologizing to our audience for putting us in. <laughs> what, we gonna, what else is there to say um i will say uh peter the falcon thank you so much for coming on uh mm -hmm. for having this ridiculous topic for giving me a great watch list of going back and watching sentence with muscles several times yeah my wife is really going to curse your name for putting that back in my brain um Danny and I will be back next week, and we'll be back with actual 40K content. Uh, so Val is going to name this episode, Do Not Listen to This, or Mistake, or even Just Not Upload It. Who knows? You guys might be the only ones to see it. Uh, we will be back next week with the Lore Bros, Taylor and Tanner, back at Full Force, um, to talk about The Infinite and the Divine. Uh, mm -hmm. If you guys have not read this book, instantly uh you, you oh guys just God. wasted an hour listening to us talk about christmas movies uh go watch uh, listen to 15 hours of infinite wow. and the divine is an amazing book um it's orica and the diviner trays in the infinite uh just looney tune style attacking each other like bugs bunny and daffy duck uh it is literally the greatest black library book i've ever ever read um wow that is high praise it really like and, and Danny, I talked to you like throughout it. Like I would just randomly message you and be like, "Oh my gosh, this happens." You're like, "Bro, <laughs> what about this entire ending that you haven't reached yet?" Um, <laughs> Are you ready for a spoiler? Oh wait, no, I'm not going to ask you that ahead of time. I'm just going to spoil the end of the book for yeah. you. It'll be great. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Peter, before we go, plug your stuff. Uh, I don't have to plug. This, by the way, what okay. do I have to plug? Cool. I don't know. You guys are good. 40kstats.com. Uh, check out his Patreon. Uh, 40kstats. Uh, and yeah. 
that's, that's all it's going to plug. Uh, for Danny, for for Peter, and for our, our now long suffering producer Val, who's jumped in several times to try and save this the, this thing, whatever it might be. Go hold your loved ones, <laughs> set up a Christmas tree, watch Avatar, and celebrate the seasons. Uh, for Grim After Dark, I've been John. Uh, we will see you Monday. <laughs>